Hey guys, it's Tark with Cyclone FPV, and I'm just grabbing my transmitter here. Um, and today I'm going to be doing a quick video on setting up a transmitter uh, to work in Betaflight. Uh, and uh, it's been some of the questions, the things that we're going to address, sorry, let me turn my phone off here. Things that we're going to address uh, initially are going to be the um, two things that people have the most problems with is uh, how to hook up the receiver to Betaflight so that you actually see the receiver and the transmitter communicating. And then the second one is when things do, when people do have it set up but they can't arm the quad there's usually some things there that they need to uh, take care of first so I'm going to show you the top uh, view here it's going to be of what we're working with so in this case we're going to be doing the QX7 now the same thing will apply to the X9D plus and the X Lite and I'll do videos on those as well but you could pretty much if you know how to get around on those then you'll know exactly what to do so I'm going to go ahead and get this started up and we're going to get started uh, with um, the basics here so let me let me just get this Sorry, let me get this going. There we go. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and delete. Uh, sorry, bear with me a second because I had been trying this, but the uh, video kept locking up. So I had gone through half of this and then everything kind of shut down. So we're going to do it again. All right, so um, let's say we're at our main, uh, main thing first is to get the transmitter set up. And everybody, a lot of people, not everybody, a lot of people seem to miss this step or skip this step. And it's really critical that we do this part, okay? Um, and it's gonna be a part of calibrating the controller to begin with so that when you do see your inputs on the screen, they're actually in the right range, okay? Uh, without doing that, um, you're gonna be off and your centers will be off and your minimum maximums will be off. And uh, we wanna fix all that, all right? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a model. And to do that, we're gonna hold the menu button down here with the three lines and we're gonna scroll down to number 34, right? Now for me, that's 34. Yours may be one, two, five, I have no idea. But one thing I wanna make sure of, and you keep notes of, and this is my fry sky thing that came out of the receiver we're gonna be using. Um, one thing is I want you to write down the number that you're using. So in this case, we're gonna be using number 34. Okay, and you'll, I'll show you why in just a second, but uh, you're gonna to get to 34, and then you're gonna hold down your enter button, uh, which is the silver button here, and then it's gonna say create model and press it again, and it's gonna load the models, and you're gonna to scroll to multi, okay, for quad. And we're just gonna go through all these just like they are. Throttle is channel one, roll channel two, pitch channel three, and the yaw is channel four. And when you press page to go through all those, you get to the end screen, it says uh, enter long, which means hold the enter button down for more than a second, and you're gonna confirm it. So just press it, and there it is. So now you have your model 34, right? Which is whatever your model number is, it's just gonna say model, and if you are number two, it'll say model two. From there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna rename this first. So we're gonna press page, and we're gonna to go to our model name. So for me, I'm just gonna title it CFPV. Now, you use this to scroll, right? And blank is all the way to the left, and if you go all the way down, you're gonna to get to your comma, and in between are gonna be your numbers and your letters. So um, I'm gonna to go to CFPV, but I want them to be capital. So the first thing is I see a lowercase c, I held the enter button down, it turns into a capital C, and it moves over one. So I'm gonna to go to F. Oops, I guess I missed it. F, there we go. Hold the enter button down, there we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me get started again. Press the enter button, wait till it goes to caps, and then we'll go to P. Hold the enter button down to caps, and then I'm gonna go to V. All right, now you can name yours whatever you want, but I'm just kind of giving you an idea of how to get around it. Okay, once you're done naming, you hit exit, all right? Now, if you hit exit all the way, you're back to your main screen here. So to get back to where we were at, you press your menu button down, you'll see all the list of your models, and then you're gonna see the one that you're in, which is CFPV, which is number 34. To enter the, the features for that, just go ahead and click page. Now, we want to bind this, right? And so the main thing is we want to bind this to our receiver. Now, in this case, what I have, and I'll remove this uh, USB cable so you can see better. So what I've done here is I've put in uh, <coughs> the following new components. Uh, this is the new F4 uh, from Multistar, which is a Hobby King uh, brand. This is the F4 um, uh, all-in-one 30 amp ESC with OSD for your video. Um, I've got two Brother Hobby uh, R2 1750KV uh, motors, and I've got a FrySky RXSR receiver. All right, now this is wired this way and set up this way because we're gonna go into more in-depth tutorials like um, mapping your motors, uh, setting up your telemetry, using your S port and so forth. But right now we're just gonna look at setting up your transmitter. All right, so we wanna go to bind. Well, the fastest way to go from your model name to bind is to turn your dial to the left and you're gonna go straight to this area right here, which is gonna give you your internal RF, which is what's inside the uh, transmitter, and it's gonna ask you your mode, and you wanna make sure that you're on mode D16. So you can either turn it off, you can have D16, D8, and you can have all the rest of these. Uh, but what we wanna do is we're gonna work with D16, and then under your channel range, uh, you can select your channel range here of what you wanna do, and we're gonna do channels one through channel 16. So if yours doesn't say one through 16, it may say one through eight, 
And if you do happen to say one through eight, make sure to click it and go to 16 and turn it and leave it at that. So your screen should look like this. D16, channel one through 16. Now here's where the number is important. I like to number my receivers to the channel, uh, to, the, to the model selection. So I know I was on uh, model 34. So to keep everything organized, I'm gonna use uh, 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 RX number 34. Now, if you don't have that selected, you can always do this. But please keep in mind that um, your receivers are gonna be bound and that number is gonna be specific to it. So once you set, select it, let's say you're in model 34 like I am, I'm only gonna use that for this one. Uh, I will not be using it again for another transmitter. So if I go to another model, then it'll be 35 or whatever number is available. If you do, you're gonna, if you rebind again on that same number, you're gonna overwrite the binding of the other one. So just make sure for rule of thumb is keep it to match the number of the um, uh, quad that you're using. Now, if for some reason um, you take your receiver and you wanna move it to different quads, then you can just go to your new model and just, you don't have to bind it again. You just tell it you wanna use uh, RX number 34 and whatever was assigned to that will be the one that you can move around. But for this sake, match it to the model number, which we wrote here is number 34, uh, receiver 34. Just a great way to do it. And if you do wanna keep track, if you have a lot of quads like I do where I have to keep testing them, you can put a number here, like a little sticky pad, uh, what do you call those little labels, put number 34 on there. That way when you grab it, you know exactly which one and it stays organized, all right? Um, all right, now here we go to the binding, right? So let me go ahead and put this on the screen and zoom in a little bit and that way I can show you what we're doing. So here's the RXSR. I'll try to get this all in here at the same time. Let me move this out of the way. Okay, so we have um, our RXSR, which is right here. And if I can show you this, right here, this little gold square that you can kind of see, right on that is the button that you press for binding. A lot of people want to know how to bind. So here's what you do. Um, in this setup, I have my uh, XT60 connected, all right? <coughs> Excuse me. And I've got my radio ready to bind, okay? So it's sitting right here. I'm gonna show you exactly what to do. The first thing you wanna do is press the bind button down and you're gonna hear it click and you're gonna feel it press, okay? Then plug in your LiPo, all right? Now, what's important here is, as soon as you see these two lights light up, you're gonna see a solid green and a solid red, right? That means it's ready to be bound to a receiver. Now you're gonna to go to your receiver. Take your cursor and go over to your bind button, press your enter key, and you're gonna have these options here. We're gonna use, we want telemetry. So we're gonna use telemetry, and we're gonna use uh, channels nine through 16 with telemetry on, okay? So go ahead and press your enter key, and now pay close attention to these lights. See, the red light is now blinking. Now your, your radio is gonna chirp, which means it's binding. Your red light is blinking, which means it recognized the binding and is now bound. At this point, press your enter button to stop the binding process on your transmitter, and you can just hit exit until you get back to your main screen here, okay? As far as your transmitter, as far as your receiver goes, just unplug your LiPo at this point, and you're done, all right? Now once you're done, your LiPo power, I mean, your, your receiver's off, your radio is on waiting. Once you plug your LiPo back in, your light will now be green. Instead of having a red and a green, you will have a green, all right? That means you're bound, and you can see on your transmitter now that you have your, uh, this is your RSSI signal, okay? So this is how you do it if you're running a um, RXSR receiver. Now, it will work for almost all Fry Sky receivers. The one thing that you need to keep in mind here is you have a blue light right here. This blue light indicates that you are in S bus mode. If you don't have that blue light, it means you're in CPPM mode, which means that it will not work on SBUS and Betaflight. So if you do not see that blue light, while this is powered on, you wanna hold your bind button down for a five count and then let go. It'll reset this to go into SBUS mode. On the flip side, if you want CPPM and you are in SBUS mode and you see the blue light and you don't want it, you wanna be in CPPM, you will hold that down for a five count on your uh, while it's powered on like this and you will flip back and I'll show you what it's like, but it is gonna send my transmitter into kind of a crazy thing, but I'll show you. So right now I'm in SBUS mode. And let's say I wanna switch. While the quad's on, I'm gonna hold down for a five count. One, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna let go. Blue light's gonna blink lost. and then the receiver, re recovered. the receiver resets itself and my transmitter lost telemetry and now it's back. Now I'm in CPPM mode and I wanna go back to SBUS because that's how I want it to run on my flight controller. Again. Hold it for a five count. One, two, three, four, five, let go. Now it resets, telemetry lose telemetry, lost. go back to SBUS, and I should see my telemetry come on 
<coughs> Excuse me, I have a little cold. <coughs> it should come back on here shortly. Now, I have noticed that when I do this, telemetry will start bouncing for a little while on here. It's fine. It's just part, of, it's not a firmware issue at this point. It's just a matter of it getting recalibrated uh, and reconnected. So if I want to get rid of it, I'll usually turn my receiver off or my transmitter off. All right, and I'll turn my receiver off and we'll just start fresh, all right? And that usually gets rid of any issues like that when you're doing this back and forth between CPPM and SBUS. So I'm gonna turn my receiver on. My radio is not on right now, so my red light's gonna be blinking on here telling me that I do not have a connection. I will go ahead and turn my transmitter on. Welcome and as soon as I get rid of the, any errors that are on here, like I don't have fail safe or something, right here, throttle's too high, I'll hit exit. And soon enough, I will have my green light and eventually my uh, RSSI signals will come back. They don't come immediately, but they come in Delemetry usually lost. a little slower. Okay, now, here's one thing we wanna Delemetry look at. Recovered. I'm gonna go Delemetry ahead and turn lost. off my transmitter, my receiver, and um, I'm going to now go to the transmitter because before we connect to beta flight, and let me zoom out now, uh, before we connect to beta flight, there are some very important things that you need to do. The first thing you need to do is you need to calibrate your transmitter. And if you don't do this, you're gonna have errors. So what I want you to do is I want you to hold your menu button down. And then when you get to this radio setup, I want you to click, hold the page button. Don't click it once, hold it down till the screen goes backwards, okay? One of the tricks on these transmitters is if you, I'll start over, if you just hold the menu button down, if you just press page, it starts going forward. If you hold the button, if you hold page, it goes backwards. So. As you can see, I'm in, I'm in uh, hardware here. And then if I press page quickly, I go to calibration. Again, I go to radio setup. If I hold it down, I go back to calibration. So we wanna be at calibration, okay? Once we're at calibration, you wanna go ahead and it tells you to press enter to start, which is your silver button, so press that. And it says to set your sticks to their midpoint. Now, this is kind of relative to what you think is midpoint. To me, this is it. And uh, it also refers to your dials up here. So let's just go ahead and find your midpoint, which on my right one, it does click. On my left one, it does not. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it right there, all right? Now, with that set, once they're in midpoint, press enter, all right? Now, here's what I do to calibrate mine. Everybody does them a little different, uh, but this is what I do. I start with my, uh, and I do not, you do not use a lot of force, okay? Use it like as if you were flying. So I start with my throttle stick and I go top left, I drag it over top right, bottom right, bottom left, back to top left, and I bring it back to my center. Then I go the other way, top right, top left, bottom left, bottom right, top right, and center. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing here. Top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left, top left, center. Top right, top left, bottom left, bottom right, top right, center. That's it. For my dials, I'm gonna turn them twice. All the way to one side, all the way to the other, all the way to one side, all the way to the other, and then just try to put them back in the middle where I think, okay? And I'm gonna hit enter, all right? Now, this is my calibration. This is telling me that I think I'm at my center point, all right? So the system has calibrated where's my center because I've shown it all the endpoints. So now it knows where my center is and I don't have to eyeball it anymore. Now when I'm done calibrating, which is very important, I'm gonna go ahead and click exit twice and go back to my main screen, okay? From here, we know now that if we turn on our, our transmitter and our receiver, Telemetry we are now covered. in a position to connect to beta flight. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my USB and I'm gonna connect my uh, flight controller to beta flight. And the reason we're doing this is we want to get our receiver configured. So we're gonna connect to beta flight. Now, because I had been working on this prior, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you my beta flight screen here. Give me one second. Uh, all right, there we go. All right, so here's beta flight, here's a transmitter and here's the quad. First thing I wanna do is I'm gonna connect into Betaflight and I'm gonna to go to my CLI because I wanna start from scratch and I'm gonna type defaults, all right? That should wipe all the settings that I've done uh, while we were working on this earlier, okay? Uh, all right, now that it's done, I'm gonna to go to connect and I'm gonna see my quad here. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna to go to ports. Now I know that on this particular board, and you wanna make these notes for your own reference, but I know that um, UART1, all right, uh, serial RX, <laughs> is uh, for my S bus, all right? So I'm gonna find UR1 Serial RX and I'm gonna turn it on, there. Now I've just told the flight controller to reference Serial R1, I mean, sorry, UR1 Serial RX, which is the RX of this, to receive 
um, the uh, signals from the receiver, okay? So do that and then click Save and Reboot, okay? Now, the next thing we want to do is we're going to go to our Configuration tab right here and I'm going to ignore all these things. I'm just going to go down to where I can select my receiver. So in this, I'm going to select Serial Based Receiver and then I'm going to drop down and find my S bus right there. That's all I need to do and I'm going to click Save and Reboot, okay? So that's step number two. Step number three is now going to be to go to my receiver tab. And what you're going to see here is we want to make sure that we see input. Let me drop my throttle here real quick. And we want to see input, okay? Now, what we can tell is we have 1500, 1500, 1500, and 987. This is a problem because we should not be at 987. And that'll fall into line with low, stick low threshold, which I'm going to explain to you. One other thing I want you to make note of is sometimes you'll see it come out like this, uh, depending on the version of the firmware you load, you will see it AETR1234 as your channel map. Then what you'll notice is your quad is spinning out of control because the mapping is wrong. If you notice this, some people keep it like this, but if you notice your quad doing this at the bottom, go back and drop down to TAER, which is what I use here, and click save and watch what happens. All of a sudden, my levels are back to normal here and my quad is now stable. But there is something here that's wrong. What's wrong here is the fact that we have our throttle at the lowest position is 987. Now this is the default when you get this controller and most of the FrySky controllers uh, and other controllers uh, is that they're not calibrated to be at 1000 and 2000, but that's the range that we work with here and I'll show you in just a second. So this low stick threshold means that what we're saying is if we wanna arm this quad, we're saying that anywhere between 1000 and 1050, as long as our throttle is in between that amount, we can flip arm and it's gonna arm. But if it's above that, it won't work. I don't like the setting. It's not the way I like it to be. And for safety reasons, I don't like it either. I like to make my controller so um, uh, specific in a range, which means you have to calibrate it and you have to take, uh, take note of it. But in this case, here's what I want you to do. Uh, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to take your uh, number, your low stick threshold, and I want you to change it to 1005. And on your high stick threshold, I want you to change it to 2000. And I want you to click save. Okay, your center stick is fine, so don't worry about that. But now you can see though that when I grab the throttle and I move it all the way up, my throttle goes all the way up to 2011, and when I go down, it goes all the way down to 987. I wanna keep my throttle and all the controls in range. Now controls being my sticks within range of 1000 to 2000, all right? So what I do to do that, and this is where people start getting to where they cannot arm their quad. Um, what I do to do that is I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to be on my screen here and I'm going to press the menu button one time and I'm going to press the page button. And here, I'll just invert these now so you can see a better close up. Okay, so I was here. I'm going to press menu one time and now I've got my prop, I mean, I've got my um, a quad selected. I'm going to press page. Now watch where I'm going here. Okay, so I've got my setup, I've got my flight modes, I've got my inputs, I've got my mixer. I've got my outputs. This is the screen that I'm focused on right now. And I've got channels one, two, three, and four, which will correlate with what's on the screen here. The first channel is my throttle, all right? So in my throttle, if you see this number, look at this number right here, you see 2012. And if you look at, <coughs> if you look at the beta flight screen, if you can read that, uh, I'll try to invert it again, you will see that it says 2011. They may be off by one point or so, but it's not a big enough issue to worry about. What we wanna do though is bring it down to 2000 and when we go minimum, we're at 988 and we want it to be at 1000. So the way to do that is you take your dial, okay, and you find your channel one and you press your enter key. And it's gonna bring up a menu and you're gonna select edit. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna increase our minimum, right? So highlight the minimum option and click enter and it's gonna start blinking and start turning the dial to the right. Now you can watch this screen. Now you can see my number here in 992, right? Or you can look at the screen of Betaflight and you can start changing it to what it equals there. It's gonna be one point off usually in one way or the other, but I'm at a thousand. So if you look here, I'm at a thousand now and I'll show you that screen, okay? You can see now that my number here for minimum, I've moved it down to 97.7 and I am at a thousand uh, on my minimum, right? So I'm gonna hit my enter button again. Now, if you look at the screen, I'm also showing on my minimum a thousand. Now we wanna to go to our maximum. So once you go, go down to now maximum and hit enter, and now take your stick all the way to the top and you see you're at 2012. Now you're gonna go the opposite and decrease. So we're gonna to turn to the left and you just keep going until you get to 2000, right? 
Now, if you look here and I press enter, it's done now. I'm at 2000 there and you can see on the beta flight screen. And if you look here, you can see that I'm at 2000 here, right? So uh, let me get these screens back like that. All right, we have just set our throttle range from 1000 to 2000, all right? So we're good there. Now, we're gonna exit out and we're gonna go to channel two. Now your channel two is gonna be on your right side and what you wanna do here, and if you look at beta flight, and I'll, I'll uh, try to make the beta flight screen bigger there for you. Okay, so when I move channel two, my minimum is 998 and on the beta flight it's 996 and my maximum is 2011. We need to go ahead and change that, okay? So let's go ahead and make sure that we get this handled. First thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and we want to um, hit enter, go to edit, and we wanna to go, to uh, to go to our minimum here and we wanna hold our stick all the way down, right? And you see that it's 999 here and on the screen it's 997, 998. Just click it and turn it to the right until you achieve 1,000, okay? Right about there. I can go one more and it's gonna bounce a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna stick with what my stick usually says, but in this case, I see beta flight's close, so I'm gonna go ahead and enter. I'm gonna leave it. So we know on beta flight, my minimum is 1,000 now, right? And now we're gonna go to um, uh, our maximum. Sorry, I was looking at the screen real quick. And on our maximum, when we go, we're showing 2011, okay? So we need to go to our maximum and hold the stick to the right and go ahead and lower it down until we get to on the beta flight. I'm looking on the beta flight screen now. Once I get to 2000. Now, if you notice, it does happen to be 2000 on here. Well, it was close. Uh, let me turn it one more. Oh no, it got there. Let me just turn it one more. All right, so we are at 2000, 2001, that's fine. Um, and this is all a matter of pressure. If I press it harder, I can get to like 2003. But if I use just standard, if I use just standard movements, I'm gonna get to about 2000. I'll lower it just a little bit more. And uh, let me see, let me see if I can get right there. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold it, turn it one more, and I should be at about 2000 there, okay? All right, so I'm gonna hit enter. Now, as long as my sub trim is still showing that I'm in the middle at 1500, I'm good. So I'm gonna hit exit twice. I'm gonna go down to channel three and we're gonna edit that. Channel three showing me 988. And so you now you'll see the other one moving. That's because I'm moving them all in the same thing, but channel three is 988 and we know that it needs to be 1000. So go to your minimum, hit enter, hold your stick down and turn it uh, to the right until you get to read 1000. And you can look at your 1000 on the beta flight screen, it's fine. All right, okay, so we're good there. I'm gonna hit enter to stop it. Now I'm gonna go to my maximum because again, I am uh, at 2011 and I'm gonna turn that and go to the left and bring it down to where it's at 2000, okay? All right, I'm good with that. And there you go. So now I have perfect lines on those. So now the last one is gonna be channel four. So it exit twice and go to channel four, all right? Channel four, my minimum is showing 987. So we're gonna go to our minimum, press the button, press enter, hold it down, and we're just gonna turn it until it reaches 1000. Okay, let go, hit enter, go to our maximum, and turn it down until we get to 2000. And in the middle, it's 1500. So now all our channels are looking on beta flight and they are gonna say 1500, 1500, 1500, and 1000, okay? What the low stick threshold says is, if you are above this, you cannot arm. If you are below this, you can. So what I wanna do next is now that this is done, I'm gonna go ahead and click save and I'm gonna exit out of my uh, transmitter screen and I'm just gonna go all the way back to my main page. So far now we are dialed in perfectly, all right? Now we wanna set up our modes. So we're just gonna work with arming mode because I'm gonna show you guys what happens when we do that. And so if I wanna add a range here, I'm just gonna click add range and I'm gonna flip the switch that I wanna use for my arming. So in this case, I'm using my switch right here and uh, oh, I may not have it mapped. I'm sorry, hold on a second. I realize now that I don't have it mapped, so this is a great time to show you. Uh, if you don't have your sticks mapped, and I guess in this case, let me go to receiver and see if any of these are mapped. No, nope, wonderful, great. All right, so we're gonna go through a real quick thing on how to, how to uh, set your sticks, right? So hit your menu button, press page, press page again, press page again, and now you're gonna get the inputs. Now, I'm just gonna do a quick one. You can repeat these for as many switches as you want but I'm gonna use uh, 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 channel five, okay? So I'm gonna go to five, let me show you what I did. So let me get out of here. So I'm gonna go to five, I'll delete this one because I kind of clicked it without showing you guys. So I'm gonna click delete. All right, so 
if you hit your, we'll start from the beginning. If you hit your menu button and you get your model selection, you see your model selected, and just keep pressing page until you get to inputs. Go to five, highlight it, hit your enter button, and now you can call it whatever you want, right? So, um, but what we want to do is for right now, uh, we'll just call it um, uh, arm. I think this is, if I'm doing this right, I have to remember if I'm not supposed to put the name here, but let me see. So let me just see if I can make this work. Okay, arm. So let me click exit and make sure. Okay, so I've given it the label arm, right? And we're gonna go back in there and edit it real quick. So, uh, and what I wanna do is, and I'll give it another name, whoops. Let me go back and I'll just call it arm with a capital A. And let me go to R and then M. Okay, now hit exit when I'm done. Uh, my, uh, let me turn this, uh, no, I don't wanna turn it off. Let me just go to motors real quick on my Betaflight and just activate the motor for a second so that it can stop beeping. All right, so that bought me some time. I'm gonna go back to receivers now. All right, so now my source. On my source, I wanna click my button, I click my enter button and it's blinking and I just wanna to toggle where I'm at, okay? So that's my SA switch and that's how it's gonna designate. I'm gonna hit enter, I'm gonna exit out of it. Exit out again. Now I have channel five, which is my arm channel, and it tells you the switch is uh, my SA switch, which is right here, and the function is gonna be arm. So now when I'm done with this, I'm gonna press page again, and I'm gonna go to my mixer, okay? And I'm gonna go all the way here to my mixer, and I'm gonna go to channel five, and I'm gonna hit enter, and I'm gonna call the mix name arm, and I just do this, you don't have to name them, but I like to be very organized with these things, arm, Okay, and I'm gonna hit exit because I'm done naming it. And it already has my source. It's automatically gonna know that if you go to channel five, it's gonna reference channel five from before. So if you notice, if I scroll here, I've got all my channels, but the fact of the matter is, is my channel five was arm. I named it earlier and you can see that, well, there, there's my arming right there, okay? So I'm gonna hit okay and that's my source, all right? And all I need to do is do this and I'm done. All right, now I have arm on channel five. Oh, I wanted to name it though. I like to name these two. So let me just go ahead and see if I can get, uh, let me see if I've got that. I don't have that option on here. All right, so we're good here. So there's our mixer. Here's our outputs. Channel five really doesn't matter, but you can see that if I scroll down to it here, if you watch, you'll see the values change. And I really don't care about the values being 988 or whatever on this point because this has no bearing on us. But if you look at the beta flight screen, now that I'm done, I have auxiliary one, which is channel five. I have it functioning now, so I can use this as an arm button, okay? And if I go back to my model screen, hit my menu and just go forward, remember now my input is arm and my mixer is arm and it's all set to work with this switch, right? So what I wanna do now is now I can go ahead and assign my mode. So I'm gonna go to my mode and I'm gonna add my range. Now you would do this for things like flight mode, like if you want horizon or acro, air, whatever, assign another switch, all right? You just follow the exact same thing for the most part. <clears throat> so in this case, I'm gonna click add range and I'm gonna flip my toggle automatically going to assign auxiliary one and you're going to put this where you want it now for me i use a three-way switch and when i push the switch farthest away from me i'm disarmed okay when i move it to the middle i want it to be armed which means it needs to fall within this yellow line when i move it to the end i also want it to be armed so i'm just going to drag this tab all the way to the end and i'm going to click save what this is telling the flight controller is whenever my switch is in middle or third position closest to me the quad should be armed the reason i do that is because I don't ever want, I always put it in third position. In the event that I accidentally bump it during flight, it may go to the middle position, but I still haven't disarmed my quad. So it's more of a fail safe for me and more of a fail protection for me to make sure that if I do bump it, which will happen occasionally, um, I don't necessarily disarm the quad immediately, okay? That's disarm, arm, arm, okay? So now we're gonna click save. Now is where I want you to see uh, the most important thing. So if we go back to receivers here, Look at my ranges, they're still great as far as the first four. The rest of them don't matter, but if you did wanna go uh, and change it, you would go back to your um, outputs and you would go to channel five and you would edit it and you would go to your minimum. And since there's only three positions here, you would go ahead and increase it to a thousand and you can do this, I mean, it's no problem. And then on maximum, you would take it down to 2000. And then in the middle, uh, you want it to read 1500, which it automatically does, okay? So now you can see everything lines up uh, perfectly on this side. Uh, I sh should have read a thousand, I guess maybe I didn't. 
No, it should. It's just not correlating here. And I did not. These are not something that you calibrate usually. But anyways, so here we're here we're at right, and everything looks good. So now we're ready to try to see if we can arm this quad. But let me show you something. So if I go to motors now, you usually if you go to your setup tab and you look here and you try to arm, you're gonna get um, errors here, and it usually will not arm when you're plugged into Betaflight. Okay, but if you want to practice it a different way, um, you can go to your motors tab and you can. Go ahead and make sure your throttle's down, get to your main screen, and you can flip the switch here. Now make sure you have no props on, right? But flip this switch, it says, I understand the risks, you wanna arm it. Now, when you flip your arm switch so you can test it, my motors are spinning, okay? So let me kinda switch screens here, and we'll show you like this. So now I've got my motor spinning, right? This is how I can test if my, my switch is working and configured properly or not. So if I turn it off, it's off. Now if I turn this off and try to arm it, I'm gonna get this little blinking light. Usually if you have a beeper, you're gonna be hearing it, but you're gonna see that blink real quickly. It will not arm, okay? Because you're plugged into beta flight. But if you want it to, go ahead and flip that switch right there and you'll see it. And it says takeoff prevention is, is, is temporarily disabled and you can go ahead and run it and make sure, all right? That is how you test your quad. Now here's where people have the biggest problem. We're gonna go back to the receiver tab real quick and we're gonna look at our quad here. See how my quad is perfectly still? It's not moving at all. Let me show you something. I'm gonna use my sliders here, uh, my sub-trim sliders, to kind of give you a demonstration of what happens if, you're, if your remote or your transmitter is not calibrated properly. I'm just gonna push it one. Now watch my quad. It's gonna slowly, very slowly, start turning, right? It's gonna start rolling, and you're gonna see here, all I did was bunch it up to 1501, okay? That's it, and it's already starting to roll. This is something you're gonna experience when you fly then. This means that when you fly, you are gonna automatically start seeing this quad, start doing this and wonder why won't it sit still? Now it could be uh, pit tuning, it could be anything, but the fact of the matter is you can at least help eliminate it here by making sure that your numbers are good. Now, there is a problem with people that have uh, sticks that are just worn out, right? And so you end up with this like, um, here, I'm gonna show you kind of a little more extreme so we can get it kind of going faster. So I've now moved it to 1505, okay? So now you're gonna see pretty quickly this thing start, um, uh, start getting ready to roll to the right. Now, if you cannot get your sticks calibrated properly to stay at a range without them bouncing around, this is where you can get your RC dead band and your yaw dead band, okay? So let me give you an example. On your RC dead band, if I'm at 1505, 1506 and bouncing, if I change this to seven and say save, watch what happens. My quad stops. And what I'm telling the computer is, there's a range in my stick mo movement that I cannot help. I either need to get new sticks, I need to you know, get, get, get new sticks, or maybe the springs are loose, or whatever it may be, but I can't stop it by calibrating it, so I need you to give me a dead band in this range. What this tells it is, up until 1507, don't calculate any of my movements. So even if I take it down now, and I'm gonna try my best to do this and show you. So I'm gonna move this to like, Oh, see, I gotta be careful here, but 15.5, let's go and see. See how it's not moving? Now, if I turn it farther than the seven points, it will. But as it stands, this is my safe zone here if I cannot get the quad to sit still within my range of what I think is middle. Now, I don't like that, so I'm gonna go ahead and change it back to zero because I don't wanna use a dead band. I want my, my transmitter to be calibrated. Now you're gonna see my quad starts pitching again or rolling again, and I'm gonna, just gonna make sure that my stuff is all centered and it stops. Okay, now here's where people cannot arm their quad. People don't tend to pay attention to this number right here. So let me show you what happens. Let's just say I'm gonna take my throttle and crank it up to 1006. Now my threshold is 1005. So if I go to motors and I go to activate my motor, I have nothing. My motors will not spin, all right? It's not a problem with beta flight. It's not a problem with anything else except it's a problem with the way you've set up your transmitter. You have got to make sure that your number here is under your number here. It can be just by one. Watch it 1002, okay? Now when I go to motors and I turn it, my motors start, all right? The reason I have a problem with it being at 1050, which seems to be what's coming on the default now, is I'll give you a prime example. Watch this. I'm gonna change it to 1050, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna crank my throttle. I'm gonna click save. And I'm gonna move my throttle up. Let me center my trim there. I'm gonna move my throttle up to 1,041, 
All right, now I'm going to go to motors. My motors are now spinning faster than they normally would, all right? And I don't like that, all right? So let's take it a little bit, let's take it a little more extreme. Now 1,050 is not more than normal, but what it is is it's telling my uh, transmitter, let's say I bumped the stick and moved it a little bit. And normally I wouldn't want it to arm. I mean, I bumped it, let's say I'm carrying something and I bump it and then I flip my arm switch. Well, I don't want it to arm, all right? I want it to be where I have made the decision to move it all the way down. So worst case scenario, somebody does something and I'm going to go extreme on it, but I'll give you the idea why. So let's say you change it to uh, 1200. Now, I don't know if it's going to let me do this, but we're going to try. Save. Okay. Now I'm going to crank my stick up to, let's say 1175. Now I'm going to go to motors and I'm going to arm it. All right. I don't like the fact that with my stick up there, I am able to arm my quad when it's, when the stick has been moved. All right. It's just a safety thing for me. Um, it, it doesn't mean that it's going to spin any faster at that point. It just means that if I bump my stick just a little bit, I want my quad to say, sorry, I can't arm it. So I know there's something wrong with the stick. I need to adjust it. All right. And I'll give you an example of how that helps you. <laughs> so if we go to receiver real quick, we're going to drop this back down to 1,005. Okay. I'm going to click save. Now I know that if my stick is here and I just move it, just say I'm, I'm carrying it and I moved it to 1,046, which won't do anything. The motor will not spin worth a darn anyway. It's not going to be fast. But the point being is, is there's still props on this thing usually, right? So now if I try to arm it, I've got nothing, right? So just because I bumped it just a little bit, I can't, which tells me stop what I'm doing, get everything back to normal, zero everything out, and just pay attention, be focused, right? Here's one of the problems that I have with this, and I'll show you, and then I'll, I'll be done with this tutorial because that pretty much covered everything we needed. If we go to configuration, this is just something that I see people do, and I wanna explain what matters on this, okay? So if we go to configuration, now you have this thing here, uh, your arming degrees, right? So let's just say, um, right now what it's saying is if I am at a maximum of 25 degrees, and I'll give you an idea of what that looks like. So if you look at this here, right? and you see, you see your degrees adjusting, right? So it says that if I'm at a maximum, and I'm just gonna put this box under here. So right now I am showing a maximum uh, heading here of 268, but I'm really looking at my pitch, my pitch degrees here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is when I go to motors, I want you to see this. Because I change, because it's set for 25 degrees, right? What it's telling the quad is, if you exceed 25 degrees, which I'll show you like right here, Okay, if you exceed 25 degrees, and it's the best way to show you here, so I am at 42 degrees. At 42 degrees, let's just say I'm carrying it, okay? If I'm at 42 degrees, under my configuration setting, if I'm above 25, I can't arm the quad. But if I'm under 25, right, and I'll go back and show you where I'm at, this is 10, 10 and a half degrees, then I can arm the quad. Don't forget my motors tab is still switched on here, okay? So just to show you, it's still on, okay? Here's the downside to this, and, and I have people that turn this off, and the, the pros, I guess, and experienced people will turn this off, but let me explain to you why I don't do it. So let's just say I put 180, all right? I, I believe that's the setting to make it, right? And I think what that does is it says that no matter what I do, I'm pretty sure that, uh, hold on, I have to log back in here, go to my motors tab, because it's still plugged into Betaflight, and do this, okay? Right, so now I can arm my quad. So here's the problem. If I, and I see this happen all the time with people, and, but they luckily don't have the setting on. If I'm walking around, I pick up my quad, I got my transmitter and I'm carrying some stuff around. If I have this set to be at any angle pretty much, and I flip that arm switch, it doesn't matter if I'm carrying it or not. This thing's gonna start and those props are gonna cut me, all right? Safety wise, it's absurd. Now, why people do it? Because they say that if they get stuck in trees, they can toggle and keep going because the quad doesn't associate, you know, it doesn't have an angle uh, issue there. Well. There's another way to do this without putting yourself at risk. And let me show you. So let's just say I'm buzzing along and I'm gonna go ahead and calibrate this to be at, uh, I'm gonna calibrate this to be at zero. So I'm gonna reset my x-axis and calibrate the accelerometer and I should get a pretty good reading here, okay? Good. Now, let's say, uh, let me go to my motors and let me go ahead and arm them real quick so I can use my toggle. Boom, I can arm my motors, right? And we already know that if I lift my quad up to here, uh, hold on, I didn't change my configuration, sorry. So uh, I need to change this back to 25, so bear with me a second. Which 25 is even extreme, but we'll keep it at that for now. So I'm at 25 right now, and we're gonna log in, and we're gonna go to our motors, 
and we're going to make it so we can arm it, right? And you can see we're arming the motors, right? Now, if I'm carrying the quad, it won't arm. I'm past my 25 degree point. But let's say I'm stuck in a tree. So to do that, I'm just going to I'm going to put these little things here to hold this up. And, uh, I hope so. Okay, so let's see if I can make this uh, stand. Okay, like that. So as you can see, it won't arm. But here's what I can do. Okay, I can go back and if you look at my setup screen here, watch this. You see my quad now is representing this, right? But if I use my sticks to recalibrate the accelerometer, watch this. I go up to the left and I go straight down. Okay, boom. I just told my quad that at this degrees, it's even again. And watch. Now, whoa, now I can arm my quad again. So even if I'm stuck in a tree, and I mean, for safety's sake, I don't want you adjusting your angle for takeoff. But if you do get stuck in a tree and you need the quad to start working, disarm it, recalibrate your accelerometer. So now watch when I put it back on the table. Now it's going to show that it's crazy because I set the zero point to be like this. Um, so I'm just going to go back, stick up left, straight down, and I'm going to bring my quad to tell it at this point it's level. I'm back to normal again. So at the end of the day, um, and I hope that makes sense. So at the end of the day, guys, it comes down, a lot of these settings come down to safety and taking your time. Everybody's so ready to just, man, man, give it to me. Let me take off. Let me take off. I don't care. The problem is, is if you have your switch set to be able to arm at an angle and you're carrying it and you flip that switch, you're going to cut yourself. There's no way around it, all right? And I've seen it happen, and I get it. People want to not have this limitation of when they're flying or they get stuck somewhere in a tree, for example, and their quad's stuck now at this angle. Well, they don't want an accelerometer to limit them. Well, in that case, reset your, uh, reset your um, axis to zero by holding top left with your throttle and straight down with your right stick and reset it to zero again. And at that point, you can arm like normal and the quad will arm, okay? These are specific, simple things to do, guys. I hope this helps for your intro. For the guys that could not get their stuff to be read on Betaflight, please make sure to select the right port. So under ports, make sure you select your serial port. And then under your um, configuration, make sure that you do have this. And keep in mind that in some firmware of Betaflight, every time you change the port, let's say you're just trying to guess which one it is, you need to go back to your configuration tab and make sure you have not reset this back. It needs to remain at serial and SBUS, and a lot of them on default will go back. So you'll think you changed the port. Why is it not working? Well, you have to go back here to configuration and set it again, okay? Outside of that, make sure to calibrate your transmitter, make sure to uh, do all your sticks, and uh, make sure to keep them in the range of 1,000 to 2,000 to make that your habit. And then make sure to also lower your um, threshold to 1,005 and make that, that'll just keep you very responsible to make sure that your sticks are always being calibrated. If not, you can get lazy and then you can be up and down 10 points and well, it's still arms, it doesn't matter, but it does matter when you're flying, okay? Hope that helps guys. Uh, this is part of a series of videos. Uh, this one is done on the QX7. Everything, the same thing applies to the other two. So you can use this video as reference and to get to those spots on the other two, I'm gonna do a video on those right now in just a minute. But if you have any questions, hit me up at tark at cycloneFPV.com. If not, safe flying, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye.